بتقول دايما الشيطان بيجي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم previously we have talked about the vascular heart diseases and we have done till now the mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis today i want to discuss about the aortic regurgitation aortic regurgitation means it aortic insufficiency Now, aortic regurgitation etiology is abnormality of the leaflets it may be the abnormalization of the aortic root so we have to we can classify etiology into two abnormality of the valve leaflets and dilatation of the aortic root As far as abnormality of the leaflets are concerned, basically I've already told you previously, affecting directly on the on the, of the valve. These are seven inner valves. Either either the superior surface are involved or the inferior surface are involved. So this is about the diseases which I've said the primary diseases: inherited disorders, degenerative disorders, metabolic disorders. the storage disorders etc rheumatic is a common disorder one of the one of the most common disorder which is affecting the aortic valve deep valves and endocarditis and those who has the congenital bicuspid valve maybe secondary to the dilatation of the aortic root via inflammation occurs or some Uh, pathology which, which can cause the dilatation or dilation of the root of the ascending aorta. Aortic annulus, you can understand, is the part if we remove the aortic valve, then the, the remaining will be the space which is called annulus. Is the dilatation of the annulus, aortic aneurysm there. A dissection of the ascending aorta or inner root, aortic ectasia, and the Marfan syndrome, one of the uh, inherited connective tissue disorder, and syphilis, famous for aortitis, syphilitic aortitis. This possibility and other diseases as well. And for example, in cases of the other autoimmune diseases. Actually, rheumatoid arthritis and more commonly, cirrhosis, like for example, and carlosing is one of the latest, may be associated with the aortic regurgitation. There are other causes as well, autoimmune nature, which can cause the dilatation of the aortic root and causing the insufficiency. It is normally I already said it is area is hardly tricuspid area is concerned, the cusp area uh, of the uh, aortic valve is concerned. It is about 1.8 to about 2 centimeter, 2.2 centimeter around. Around the valve to overlap, but shutting because we are seminal about the shut in the Diastole help to when collapse in the diastole and shut. The normal function is not that it is shutting and collapsing. In fact, of the diseases in rheumatic, the cusp barrier will be reduced, leading to the central defect. And the endocarditis destroys the cusp by tears, forming tears in it, and destroying it normal function. Your root dilation is the central defect, which causes because of the. Uh, because of the uh, you know, push of the annulus towards the periphery, 
the aortic root will be dilated. Basically, when this occurs, it means that after the stone, after the stone, that the wall, the valves, leave that should shut down. But it is not happening in this case. So the back pressure occurs inside the left ventricle and becomes overload. All dilatation and hypertrophy of the left ventricle very hard very uh, enlarged heart artery in this condition. The prostostolin and the diastole, normal in this case, it is the abrupt dysfunction of the of the systole, systolic function of the heart is depending on the efficiency of this valve. So there will be uh, pressure on the ascending aorta, which is called the trans aortic gradient. It is very narrow in this condition. Diastolic burden it is a critical point because the diastolic pressure is very very less in this condition. After the diastole, burden occurs definitely. Because we have the wall with the valves, leaves are not shutting down. Impact factor in the left ventricle it causes a heart failure, and, and the low diastolic pressure will, of course, leading to the incompetent valve and vasodilation secondary. And low diastolic pressure will also cause the insufficiency of the coronary circulation also. Pathophysiology actually acute, it will take very, very lesser time. As seen in cases of trauma to the chest wall, it, it can occur in the dissection of the aorta. And it can cause, the other causes will be possibility uh, of the endocarditis. These are the uh, causes which cause acute chronic traumatic and uh, inherited and other which I have told you. There are many other causes of aortic dilatation, it may be autoimmune diseases which, which cause the aortic dilatation with a chronic or subacute sub or chronic type of the aortic regurgitation. Clinical features long course, progressive one, palpitation and Disney of teeth and gynepectoris as a rule, self explanatory. And this chart is seen in this is of uh, the mild, moderate, and severe aortic infiltration. The arterial pulse and the blood pressure in the aortic infiltration. This is a characteristic pulse which is seen in this condition. That the ascending limb is high, it go up. It means the volume of the pulse is good. And it is sustained there. This is a diacritic knot and it's going down. And down and down. It's called hyperkinetic type of pulse. Everything will be hyperkinetic in this condition. Remember, hyperkinetic occurs with every pulse, not in the radial pulse and carotid pulse, but every pulse will be like this. On examination, if you see again inspection, you see a lot of pulsation seen in the martial area tricuspid area, aortic area, pulmonary area, as I have already told you in my previous lecture of aortic stenosis, the same thing happening here. Maybe the whole of the chest wall is actually, you see pulsations in the, in the world is pulsating and pushing the anterior chest wall outwards. And that was everything on the chest and GLD on the left side is pulsating. Pulsating precordial. This is a pulsating precordial. When you go for the palpation, then of course I will see, the first of all, the pulsation are concerned. Before pulsation, I want to see the, some peripheral effects. I said the hyperkinetic pulse will be seen in every way. In the suppressed in the north, in the carotid 
they are the curated artists they are very very you know versatile and it is called corrigan sign even all artists are sitting in the neck it's called head nodding it's called demasse sign and in the ibula even maybe versatile is called probe it is uh, sign etc you know there are different names but sitting ibula can be remember rather than the specific in the parallel signs also seen in the uh, lower limbs Yes, the pistol shot is a pistol shot murmur. You press the stroke, you will see, you will, uh, uh, auscult, you can auscultate this murmur. And there is a difference between the pressure of the upper limbs and the lower limbs, mark difference. We'll see later on. So, in the peripheral vascular system is involved as well as the Audio vascular system, precordium is involved. All effects are seen. First result is commonly caused by the closure of the metal well. No, it is the closure of the aortic well and the permanent well. It is a component, it is the shutting sound. It shuts the sound. My student in front of me said that I am saying wrong actually. He said that it is the shutting of the metal well and opening of the attic well. And he said that it is the shutting of the tricuspid well and the opening of the pulmonary well. You produce the sound because historic phase. In historic phase, there may be a murmur you will find. It is a functional murmur because of the increased blood flow. The second heart sound is here, component A2, P2, the closure of the aortic valve with the diastolic phase, the closure of the pulmonary valve, P2, and there is a slight difference. Afterwards, there is a murmur, which is crescendo, the crescendo type of a murmur. First of all, it is very, very high pitch. If you ask the person to bend down and in, in, in expiration, hold the breathing in expiration, it will increase and very, very appreci appreciated sound. And this diastolic murmur may be radiated. It may be clear to murmur or more than that. It may be radiated. Although the diastolic murmur are usually not radiated, but this murmur can be radiated if it is very, very severe insufficiency. There are signs that say the quinky sign in the capillary position. You put the pressure on the nail back. They were very, very quick inflow and outflow. You see in polygon sign, water, under pulse, you see. Or polygons pulse, this is. It's not sign, polygon pulse. The polygon sign is dancing character. Dancing character. The polygon sign is water, under pulse. If you would put your finger on the pulse for the volume and then abruptly you will raise the limb severely then it, it causes very very high volume on on your palpating fingers this is called the water handle pulse or collapsing pulse it can occur in other condition as well like for example, in very high anemic, highly anemic patients, in cases of the, let's say the, where, the, where there is a direct communication between the arteries and the veins, for example, even fistulas, you would see this type of pulse. In case of aortic irritation, you find this type of pulse. And other conditions also there. The serious pulse, when there is a content of aortic stenosis and aortic irritation, both are there. It means that you find the pulses, parvus and tardis, and with the, with, with, with the water hammer pulse. There will be a delayed 
of the diastolic phase. Diastolic notch is will be wider, and this is called the steering pulse. The muscle sign is stolic head bobbing. Muller sign is stolic was in uvula, muller. Brazilian sign is a femoral little with breeze, you heard. Probably sign is pistol shot, you heard, if you put the step stroke on the femoral. Hill sign is blood pressure, is higher on the lower extremity than the upper extremity. The difference of 20, between 40, and, and there is difference in, of 60 millimeter, severe aortic stenosis. Depends upon the severity. Lab evolution is test ideology, electrocardiography. And echo and exercise testing and cardiac catheterization. This is a very characteristic x ray. You see this upper part of the medial cinema. See, this is how it happens. This ascending aorta is very, very body dynamic. This is the pulmonary conus. The bulge you see here, the high pressure bulge of descending aorta is coming here. After. This is the hard border. It is a bovis type of heart. Heart of the buffalo. Buffalo one. Very, very wide heart. Big heart. Giant size heart. There are other funny as well. And inshallah, I will cover it in the radiology. In the electrocardiogram, you see the hypertrophy of the left ventricular. If you count V1. As to count the five R is more than three five thirty five millimeter. The EVF is here. You see in both pages, EVF is up and is here up. It means that there is no excess deviation. You calculate it minus thirty two plus hundred or plus one hundred and ten, then you find that in, it is a dilatation. Actually, it is not a dilatation. This is it is hypertrophic content of the heart, which is shown in the electrocardiogram. So otherwise, the type of finding will say much about these, these things. It may be dilated, it may be hypertrophic as well. It, it is covering most of the mediastinum. Doppler studies will also confirm it. Differential diagnosis with the mitral stenosis because the diastolic murmur the differential diagnosis of diastolic mama, pulmonary irritation, functional, non steel mama, patent exit arteriosis also causing the mama of murmur. You say it is the whole mama. It is proto systolic plus proto diastolic. So if the mama is uh, total mama in PDA specific. It is also the mama which you can find in the posterior back. In between the scapula, posterior you can hurt this mama very well. In fact, it is in So the mama is very, very you know, hard and sharp and other things like that. If they are differentiated actually because of the findings. This is the differential diagnosis depending upon the findings. Management again, I'll say the medical therapy is the same one which I told you the therapy is concerned. The management, we manage the patient, we don't treat the patient. General major rest because of the congestive cardiac failure. It should be done. The two pillows should be taken. The specific measures here are done for all the problems of the heart is concerned. We will give the agent which will reduce the preload, for example, diuretics. But it should not lower the blood pressure. Very low. Diastolic blood pressure will cause coronary insufficiency. So it will be a congestive cardiac failure therapy. And the and the drugs acting on the heart and it reduces the oxygen consumption on the heart, beta blockers, intrinsic, intrinsic sympathomimetic type of a beta blocker, like for example, uh, cavidolol or the metaprolol in very low dose. And the after reducing the afterload, afterload, the best example I have already given is Rosata. It can be given at 6.25 milligram. These are the specific measures pharmacological response. As for the symptomatic measure, if the patient feels pain, 
because of in general, maybe in general pain, you can give the coronary vasodilators. Patient may have got vertigo and you know the other thing as well. Accordingly, you will you will give the medications. Then we call, go for the preventive measures are concerned because one ball is involved, the other balls are not involved. Primary prevention, you go for the because of the uh, stasis chances are there of stasis in the heart, specifically ATR are concerned. You have to use the acetylsalicylic acid or copetogrol, and you have to give this patient the low dose of the HMG codotectin inhibitor like rovastatin 5 mg. Other preventive measures the same I said previously, that is, it is rheumatic intervention, and only when the allergy involved, the other world should be saved by giving the benzathene penicillin, the Panadol LA for whole life. And about the surgical measures, yes, of course, the specific surgical measures are there. If the patient arrives many times with the permanent edema, he is in class, near class 3 or 4, or he has got cardiac dyserythmias, which you have managed previously, has got low ejection, going down and down and down. Gradually, you have to replace the valve. If it is a young patient and there is no coma, coma bed fit for the surgery, go for the mechanical valve. If the patient is old or a pregnant woman, a young patient, but he has got, he is uh, not fit for the surgery. You can do the bioprosthetic valves, tissue valves. If you are using the mechanical valve, you have to give the anticoagulant along with it, water and sodium. And INR should be 3 to 3.5 for the whole life. Because you have to give this uh, drug for whole life. It should be monitored properly. The valve replacement is maybe there, it may be endovascular surgery nowadays, it may be open heart surgery nowadays, it's possible. So the thing is this, the surgical therapy, I said, surgical major, the aortic valve should be repaired, it may be replacement, repair can be done. If it's a minor, minor or a mild, I will say, or a moderate, you can repair the endovascular catheterization. Even a whole valve can be replaced nowadays by endovascular surgery. The other complication as well, for example, he has got one vessel or two vessel disease, but it's better to go for the open heart surgery. An aortic root replacement can occur with the dilatation causing the problem. You will tight it out, or it will be replacement will be there. Some barrier should be inserted in the at, at the aortic root to reduce the size of the annulus. So these are the measures. Afterwards, I say that there will be, there will be after the surgical measures, the, the people asking about the dietary measures, low sodium diet, take the water in a sips, not more than 1.5 liters, to reduce the chances of the pulmonary edema. And you will go for the other than that, definitely, uh, I'll say that uh, more than that, uh, the dietary measures are local measures. You can put the glycide tinnitus patch on the chest wall, no problem. Uh, it will benefit the patient. And you, th these are the uh, points regarding the management part is concerned. I hope that I have done the mitral valve stenosis, mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation and, and in my summarized session and uh, there are definitely important point, points my keywords are important for all all, all of you if the, this uh, session is physically I will take the lecture I should take this lecture physically or interactive then it will be more beneficial I'm very thankful you have listened the sessions one, two, three, and four, very calmly and quietly. If there are any question, I'm I'm uh, available on the uh, on my WhatsApp.